Welcome to chemistry underscore studio underscore the intellectual odyssey rages on. Hello students, how are you doing today? As I always say in my class, the real purpose of a classroom is to stimulate the thinking of the student in the right direction. Welcome to this video on electromagnetic radiation. In this video, we'll be talking about what electromagnetic radiation is, its examples, properties, and important uses. We'll also discuss the concept of quanta and photons, as well as Planck's quantum theory. But surely before that, like, share and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Dear students, I want to take a moment to thank you all for watching and appreciating our previous video on Buckminster Fullerene and Graphene. It's always gratifying as a teacher to see your students take an active interest in the subject matter and engage with it on a deeper level. I encourage you to continue your exploration of chemistry and to always stay curious and engaged in your learning. Remember, chemistry is all around us, from the air we breathe to the food we eat, and it is a subject that has the power to transform our world in countless ways. So, what is electromagnetic radiation? Simply put, it's a type of energy that travels through space in the form of waves or particles. This energy is produced by the movement of electric and magnetic fields, hence the name, electromagnetic. Explanation of electromagnetic radiation. Electromagnetic radiation is a form of energy that is made up of oscillating electric and magnetic fields. These fields are perpendicular to each other and to the direction of the waves travel, forming a transverse wave. Electromagnetic radiation is characterized by its wavelength and frequency. Wavelength is the distance between two successive peaks or troughs of a wave. Frequency is the number of waves that pass through a given point per second. The relationship between wavelength and frequency is inverse. As wavelength increases, frequency decreases, and vice versa. This relationship is described by the equation C equals Lun, where C is the speed of light, 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, lambda is the wavelength, and nu is the frequency. Examples of electromagnetic radiation. Electromagnetic radiation comes in many forms, each with its own wavelength and frequency. The most well-known form of electromagnetic radiation is visible light, which has a wavelength of approximately 400 to 700 nanometers and a frequency of 430 to 750 terahertz. Other examples of electromagnetic radiation include radio waves, microwaves, infrared radiation, ultraviolet radiation, X-rays, and gamma rays. Properties of electromagnetic radiation Electromagnetic radiation has several properties that distinguish it from other forms of energy. One of its most unique properties is that it can travel through a vacuum, such as space, without the need for a medium. This is because it is made up of oscillating electric and magnetic fields that generate each other as they travel. Another property of electromagnetic radiation is its ability to be absorbed or reflected by matter. This is due to the fact that matter contains electrons, which can be excited by the energy of the radiation. The interaction between the radiation and the matter depends on the frequency and intensity of the radiation, as well as the properties of the matter. Important Uses of Electromagnetic Radiation Electromagnetic radiation has many important uses in our daily lives. For example, radio waves are used for communication, such as in radio and television broadcasting, as well as in mobile phones and Wi-Fi. Microwaves are used in cooking and telecommunications. Infrared radiation is used in remote sensing, such as in thermal imaging cameras, and in heating applications, such as in infrared heaters. Ultraviolet radiation is used in sterilization and in the production of vitamin D in the skin. X-rays are used in medical imaging, such as in X-ray machines and CT scanners. Gamma rays are used in cancer treatment and in nuclear medicine. Planck's Quantum Theory 
The history of Planck's quantum theory begins in the late 19th century, when scientists were trying to understand the behavior of light and other forms of electromagnetic radiation. At the time, it was believed that electromagnetic radiation was a continuous wave that could be described using classical physics. However, experiments such as the photoelectric effect, where electrons were ejected from a metal surface when exposed to light, could not be explained using classical physics. In 1900, German physicist Max Planck proposed a radical new idea to explain the photoelectric effect. He suggested that electromagnetic radiation was not continuous, but rather existed in discrete packets of energy called quanta. Planck's idea was revolutionary, as it contradicted the classical theory of electromagnetism, which had been widely accepted for centuries. However, Planck was able to show that his theory could explain the observed behavior of the photoelectric effect, as well as other phenomena such as blackbody radiation. Planck's quantum theory proposed that the energy of each quantum of electromagnetic radiation was proportional to its frequency, and that the constant of proportionality was now known as Planck's constant. This idea had far-reaching consequences, as it led to the development of quantum mechanics and the understanding of the atomic and subatomic world. Planck's quantum theory was initially met with skepticism, but it was eventually widely accepted as experimental evidence continued to support its predictions. Planck was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1918 for his work on quantum theory. Quanta and Photons Electromagnetic radiation can also be described as a stream of particles, known as photons. Photons are packets of energy that have both wave-like and particle-like properties. They have no mass and travel at the speed of light. The energy of a photon is proportional to its frequency. The higher the frequency, the higher the energy of the photon. Quanta refers to the idea that electromagnetic radiation can only exist in discrete amounts, or packets of energy. This idea was first introduced by Max Planck in 1900, and it formed the basis for the development of quantum mechanics. Interactive videos can be an excellent tool for engaging students and generating interest in the subject of chemistry. By using visual aids and interactive features, these videos can make complex concepts more accessible and easier to understand. Whether used as a supplement to traditional teaching methods or as a standalone learning tool, interactive videos have the potential to transform the way that students learn and engage with the subject of chemistry. So, thank you very much once again, for watching this. I want to see you all in the comment section below the video. You can, and you should suggest me topics for my next videos. I will see you, very soon. The intellectual odyssey rages on. Keep watching my channel. Love you all. Thanks for watching.